Ah, uh, snap! Guess what it's time for everybody? Time for, uh, it's time for us to clear the water after offending some viewers? What better way to get back into an Ask Home Study than me defending a choice of thumbnail that I used in a recent video? <laughs> We're gonna do that in today's Ask Home Study. We're gonna tell you about Ask Home Study and how it's coming back to the channel and this is officially the first video that was unplanned. We're also gonna answer a bunch of your pig-related questions that you left on our most recent video and over on our latest Instagram post. All that and more, possibly. <laughs> in today's Ask Home Study, let's dive into the drama around this thumbnail picture and everything else we want to talk about with pigs. Hello, welcome everybody to Ask Home Study. This is the show that we used to do and haven't done in a long time where we answer your questions and sometimes discuss some of the comments that are left here on the channel. Generally speaking, we are answering questions that people have asked us with the hashtag all one word Ask Home Study. So if you want us to answer one of your questions, just leave a comment in our videos with the hashtag Ask Home Study. And I'm including some stuff from Instagram today. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, you're missing out. Everybody on Instagram gets a sneak peek before something comes to YouTube. They get to see the thumbnail and learn what the video is gonna be about before it drops. So click there to follow us on Instagram. Say hello. We are going to be today first discussing a recent thumbnail that I used that actually uh, enraged a couple people and other people were disgusted by it, uh, shocked by it. We're gonna talk about why I we're gonna talk about it, we'll get into that first. All that and more, let's get into it. First, let's talk about the thumbnail that caused a lot of drama. We are going to at least begin today's video in the hayloft because right now the farm happens to be very noisy. We have guineas in the barn and they won't stop yelling at me and the hayloft is nice and peaceful and quiet a great place to discuss this issue. I wanna begin this discussion just by saying I have absolutely no problem if you disagree with me. We have made this comment in lots of our videos. Homesteading is one of those things that we all can be trying to do the same thing and we can all be doing it in many different ways. So I understand that lots of you watching this channel have come to homesteading for different reasons than I have and you will do things differently and you will make different decisions than I will. Uh, but I do want to explain my point of view on our recent video and the thumbnail that I used for that video, why I actually think it's important to use pictures and thumbnails and share that in videos like I did and why I won't be taking it down or changing it. Uh, I did make one small edit to it. So let's get into it. What happened that was so divisive? What did people not like? The thumbnail in question, recently we did a video on do heritage hogs taste better than commercial style pigs? And also 10 other things I learned butchering my first pigs. And the thumbnail is me holding up a pig's head. <laughs> I definitely understand there are people in the world who don't wanna see a picture of that. My parents are exactly that kind of people. I love my mom and dad, you've seen them on the channel before. They're very supportive of me. They're very supportive of what we do here on the farm. They're probably gonna watch this video and uh, hi mom and dad if you're watching. Uh, I wanna use them as an example because you know I love my parents. You've seen them on the channel before. We have a great relationship. They are very different than me in this way. This whole raising your own meat, uh, raising animals that you then kill and butcher, uh, hunting animals to feed my family. Well, I did not grow up that way. It was very different. And my dad especially, I consider to be a very big softy. I uh, love my dad, he's a great manly man, a hard worker, but when it comes to things like animals, he, pigs are his favorite animal, and if he were to see that picture of me holding up a pig head, he'd go, ooh, that's, ooh, ah, I don't like that, and he'd look away. 
My dad loves eating bacon. My dad loves eating steak. But he also is a softie. When he sees a dead animal, the thinking of the animals that he saw on the farm being dead, it, it, it hurts his heart. And I get that. So if you're like that, I got no problem with you. If you're a softie, hashtag comment below, I'm a softie, and that's okay. Now why did I use that thumbnail, and why do I actually think that it's important? Uh, I got some negative comments. I, n I never mind you disagreeing with me, like I've said. And if you want to comment in any of my videos something that disagrees with what I said or what I did, and you, you want to respectfully make an argument that I am wrong or have made a mistake, I'm all ears. I will respond, I will defend my position or apologize if I have made an error or a mistake. I have no problem with that, as long as you're respectful. There were a couple comments I've deleted because there are people out there who will, the minute they see you're eating animals and, and putting them on your table, uh, they will say they wish that was done to you. Killing an animal is not the same as killing a human. If you think that, I 100% disagree with you. Killing an animal, uh, while it is something that I do respect, that is not easy to do every single time, it's something that I approach with the respect of someone who didn't grow up even hunting, never grew up raising his own meat, was totally new to this kind of lifestyle when I came to it. Uh, so it still is a sacred moment. Yet, I'm driving down the road. This is like the trolley problem, but homesteader version. You're driving down the road, I'm driving down the road, and all of a sudden you see in the road, on one side of the road, a dog jumps out into the road, and then the other side, the dog's owner comes to grab it. And you have to swerve and hit the dog or the human. Who do you swerve and hit? You gotta pick one. I hope you picked the dog because again, a human life and an animal life, while both are very important and to be respected, I do view an animal life as less important than the human life. So if you comment below and say, you butcher pigs, well I wanna see you butchered. See you later, you've been blocked, you're off the channel, goodbye. I'm not gonna talk with people who have that opinion. You're, you, you and me will never see it eye to eye. But if you're someone who, like this comment, uh, just says, hey Aust, uh, not sure why you did this, I thought it was disrespectful, I'd love to have a discussion here and that's what we're here to do. So, I use the thumbnail of me holding up the pig, I'm not crying tears, I'm smiling. My first question, if this picture, the idea of me holding up a, a, a pig's head uh, bothered you, if I was holding a slab of bacon and smiling in a thumbnail, would you deem that disrespectful or inappropriate for a homesteading channel? If I was a channel about eating a vegan lifestyle and I posted a thumbnail of me holding bacon, that would not be appropriate. Uh, that wouldn't make sense. That could offend my audience. But if I were holding up a slab of bacon and smiling on a homesteading channel, honestly, would that, would that bother anyone? Would there be a negative reaction to me doing that? I would say no, <laughs> because I've done it. I have pictures of me holding bacon in thumbnails, smiling, big smile, and no one's ever said, that's really tasteless. I have a problem with that thumbnail. I can't understand why you would do that. Uh, that's disgusting. No one's ever done that because they totally expect to see a homesteader holding bacon and smiling. It's what we do. We love bacon. Honestly, a major reason why I raise my own food is so I can have my own bacon. Now, let's make a little jump. While a pig head looks different than a slab of bacon, if you had watched my last video, you would learn that in that pig head, there are 10 to 15 pounds, uh, depending on the pig you use, uh, 10 to 15 pounds of bonus bacon in the jowls. And that is what we talked about in that video. We said that we use the pig jowls, we smoke it just like bacon. When I look at the head of a pig, I think bacon. Holding up a pig's head and smiling in a video that's about butchering pigs is completely normal to me because a pig's head, once the animal has been killed, is part of the food. And this is where I think this is actually important and why I think this needs to happen more, not less, on homesteading channels, Instagram channels about homesteading and the like. Let me explain. For about four or five years, we ran a business selling pastured pork back when we had our farm in Connecticut. We had lots and lots of customers. A couple of you still watch the channel. Hello, uh, if you're watching and you were one of our previous customers. In four or five years that we did that, 
uh, the dozens and dozens and dozens of customers that we sold pastured pork to, a lot of them would buy a half or a whole pig from us. And in all the years of selling farm-raised pastured pork, every customer that I said, hey, what do you want me to do with the head of your pig? Every single one of them said, oh, I don't want that. They didn't want to take the head from the pig. They did not see it as food. They saw it as a face, and we don't like to think of our food having a face often. I understand this. Again, I did not grow up this way, so I lived a life where my food did not have a face. And if that's you right now, I'm not judging you. I'm not mad at you. It's, it's, uh, but I do think everyone who eats meat needs to realize your food had a face. And that face, they would always, every single customer, oh, I don't want that. Now, eventually I started informing them, hey, you can have that turned into jowl bacon. Oh, you'll get it back. It'll look just like bacon. It's smoked. It tastes a lot like bacon. I would educate and inform them. And then people started saying yes. But when, before I did that, you know what happened to that pig's head? 10 to 15 pounds of beautiful, delicious bacon got thrown in the trash. I was not the butcher. It was done at a USDA facility. The USDA facility had no legal right to do anything else with that product. It was a custom cut product. It was not allowed to be resold. Guess where that pig's head, that beautiful product, beautiful bacon, wound up in the trash. Why? Because a lack of education and understanding. I run a homesteading channel that is, it's edutainment, it's entertainment and it's education. From day one, we have been focused on not just vlogging for entertainment, but also educating those out there who would like to live this lifestyle. I literally have thousands of people watch every video. If I on a video say, hey, this pig's head has 10 bonus pounds of bacon, how many thousands of pounds of pork that would either have been thrown in the garbage or maybe at best, you know, scrapped and, and fed to another animal or something. How many thousands of pounds of that beautiful product will now wind up on someone's table as an honored, cherished item? I love my jowl bacon. I would share it with my friends and family who didn't raise pigs, who never, you know, bought pigs for me. One of the things I would share with them if they were over for breakfast, I'd say, hey, this is jowl bacon. It's very special. It comes from the pig's head. It's one of the best parts of the pig. It's prized possession. And I would share that with people who were dear to me. What better respect and honor can you give to an animal that you have raised, spent time caring for, then killed peacefully on farm where it knows where it lives, uh, it wasn't nervous. The pig that we butchered in that video, he was literally laying down in his bed and I pulled the trigger and it was lights out and he was peaceful, happy to the very end. What better respect can you pay that animal than to use every part of it? And if I can help educate even 10 people, if there are 10 people watching that video that are gonna raise pigs that would have said, oh, I don't know what to do with the head. Yeah, you can throw that away. I don't know what to do with it. If 10 people get 10 pounds of bacon off of 10 pigs, that's 100 pounds for another 10 years of raising pigs, that's a thousand pounds. This beautiful quality product I can help save from the garbage and have it become a res uh, honored and respected and revered item. More and more people need to see whole hog usage, whole lamb, whole cow usage. Now I might sound like I'm on a soapbox. I can promise you I'm not on a soapbox. I am sitting on a hay bale. You saw me sit down on the hay bale like a minute or two ago. <laughs> Uh, I want to be honest here. I am sounding like I'm in a soapbox, like you should use the whole hog and that's why I show it. I didn't always use the whole hog. You know what I said the first time my butcher asked me, I'm ashamed to admit this, but it's the truth and I like to be really honest here on our channel. You know what I said the first time the butcher asked me, what do you want me to do with the head and the organs and the feet? I said what all my customers said. Oh, uh, yeah, we don't have any use for those. You can keep them and you can keep them while maybe at the time I didn't know this, it, it just means you can throw them away. Where I am now in life, like saying that makes me feel awful. 
Like, oh man, that is disrespect to an animal. That is disrespect to the creature that once I cared for and lived a nice happy life on my farm. Why did I say that? Was it because I wanted to throw good bacon away? No, it's because I didn't know any better. I lacked the education and it wasn't until I had heard from my butcher, hey, you know, you can do this with this and you can do that with this and you know, you might as well keep it. You've already spent the time and energy and effort and money on this animal. Why not get the best yield you can? And once I was educated, it changed my mind. And now, although that first year I might have wasted and that that's serious and I feel bad about that, never again. So. If I put on a thumbnail, me holding a pig slab of bacon, or a pig's head, or a pig's hoof, to me, all people who eat meat need to realize it was an animal. And once you make that like leap and say, okay, I, I not only, obviously everyone knows that, but like really get that like, oh man, it was a living animal with a face, it will change how you buy meat, where you buy meat from, who you support, what you do. When you take accountability for that and you say, you know what? I know this was an animal that was alive once. This is some, you know, Joe Schmo's talking and saying, you know what? I buy my meat from the supermarket. I have no idea what kind of life it lived, but it had a face, it had feet, it had a tail, it was a pig one time, and it could have lived a happy life on this farm that I lived down the road from, or it could have lived in like a factory production facility where uh, maybe it wouldn't have the nicest life it could. From now on, I'm gonna support Farmer John, who raises pigs the best way possible, he's gonna get my money. He's gonna get my vote, because I respect the animals. And when he asks me, do I want the pig head? You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna have a big smile on my face. I'm gonna say, of course, I love using all product from my animals. I'm gonna take that head, I'm gonna turn it into delicious bacon that I share with my family and tell my friends about. And guess what? Most of my viewers I revere as some form of friend. Unless you're one of those people who said you'd like to see me butchered. In that case, you, you're blocked, you're insane. But the people who I make these videos for are like extended friends and I want you all to know what you can do with these animals. It takes a lot of time, effort, love to care for them. You might as well use every part of them. We need to recognize that the whole animal is food. And that's why I'll keep posting pictures. And that's why I'll keep making videos about this. I honestly don't, I'm not trying to shock anyone. I know that picture can, I, I understand some people are bothered by that kind of image. Uh, we're a homesteading channel. This isn't a vegan channel. This isn't a cute little piggy channel or a cute little puppy channel. So. While I understand some people will be shocked, I honestly don't feel, if you're here for homesteading, I don't feel that kind of picture should shock you. Maybe you don't love it, and I get that. And if you wanna be like my dad and say, oh, uh, it's okay, I'm not saying you gotta look at this, and you know most of my videos don't have that in it. But if it's a video about butchering a pig, and I'm gonna hold up any part of that pig, I just don't personally find that to be distasteful, shocking, I think more people need to understand the, the food value, they call it, you know, nose to tail. And the nose is on the face, which is one of the things that I use to feed my family. There it is. Not trying to fight with anybody. Uh, love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. We always try to keep an open dialogue. We are not about cancel culture, which the next comment I'm gonna address was totally someone who wanted to do cancel culture. Boom, they unsubscribed because they could not have a logical discussion with uh, adults about something that we might have disagreed on. So, but let's dive into that next one. The next comment I'm going to address was left also on the same video about butchering pigs. Probably won't get to see this because they have unsubscribed and let me know that they were doing so uh, because I did something that they thought was wrong in my use of uh, the, the gun that I used to stun the pigs. I'm not gonna go very long on this one. The basically long and short of it is this person said that my use of a 22, which in the instance of our pig butcher, I was using a 22 Magnum. They had a very big problem with that. They said, I obviously didn't know anything about firearms and they were unsubscribing. Instead of having a logical discussion saying, hey, Oss, I always believe this and here's some data to prove it, some articles to prove it, uh, what do you think? Were you wrong? If I was wrong, I'd happily come on here. I've done it in the past and say, hey, you know what? I was wrong about this. Let me apologize. 
I do not believe I was wrong about suggesting a 22 as an option to stun a pig for a butcher process. If you read the links in the video that I talked about, I actually said in that last video, there are links below to veterinary journals and they explain what guns you should use for pig euthanasia. This wasn't my idea, this was veterinary journals. They suggested 22 and up. They also suggested shotguns depending on the, again, not my idea, not my personal opinion, veterinary journals suggesting this. Uh, I have links below. So basically this person said 22 is the wrong gun to use to stun a pig. I have to remind the person, I don't know, maybe they're a hunter, but you would never hunt like a deer with a 22, never shoot a deer in the head with a 22. That would be very unethical. On-farm hog processing is not hunting. On-farm hog processing, your goal is to stun the hog, eliminate brain usage, uh, while you then bleed out the pig while its heart is still pumping. Very different than when you're out hunting wild game from far away. Uh, on farm, you're stunning the pig. In article after article, veterinary journals saying a 22 is a perfectly fine rifle to use to stun a pig. It will wipe out brain activity when done properly. It will drop the pig to the ground, allowing you to then stick that pig, which is what actually kills the pig. You are bleeding the pig out, getting all the blood out of it. You want the heart to continue pumping. So this person doesn't want to have a, lar a logical discussion. They have unsubscribed. I have no problem with people who, cons who like to use cancel culture unsubscribing. So if you're one of those cancel culture people and you're like, hey, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to turn your, your show off. Good, go. Uh, there's no discussion there. But for all you who like to have logical discussions amongst adults, I'd love to hear your comments below what you choose for pig use to the nation on your farm. I encourage in the last video people to go and read the links below and of course I encourage you to do that in this one because I'm not the expert but I hold a lot of value in what a veterinarian journal has to say on the subject uh, much more than a random comment on YouTube from someone who's unsubscribed. So let's move on now to some nice questions that we got from the pig video. Tommy09, this was over on Instagram. So again, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you can click the link in that bubble there. Follow us on Instagram, you get sneak peeks to our upcoming videos. I'm really interested in Berkshire, or Berkshire, depending on how you want to pronounce that, pork, uh, pigs. What were your thoughts on those bad boys? He says, by the way, I love y'all, man. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Tommy09. Uh, Tommy09. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your input and your question. Berkshires, I think, are a great pig. And actually, I got a couple questions about breeds. Berkshires, uh, what do you think about this breed or that breed? And I'm gonna piggyback onto that. What breed do you suggest for someone raising slash butchering pigs for the first time? So I'm gonna combine these two. That was J. May, 75. There's pros and cons to all pigs. Berkshires are a nice heritage breed pig. They have great flavor. Uh, the Berkshires we raised were not very nice, and they were kind of skittish and spooky, which is okay if you're not trying to have a nice up-close experience with those pigs. Um, they did not grow as big as the commercial pigs, which is why at the time I stopped doing them, because I was selling pork and I wanted a bigger product. I wanted more for my customers. So I stuck with the commercial Yorkshire land race with a little bit of Burke mixed into that sometimes, uh, but not a straight Burke. That said, if you're a homesteader who wants a durable pig, if you want to buy feeders from somebody around you and they have Berkshires, they will be durable, hardier in the colder climates than your big pink pigs because they got more hair, a little tougher. They will grow slower, but you'll have a really good tasting product. Overall, thumbs up to the Burke if that's what you're looking for. Basically, there's not a wrong breed of pig. I have a really hard time with people in the homesteading world who get real black and white about things. You know, this is the best breed of pig and this is the worst. I think that's kind of a foolish way to approach things. You need to have objectives and know what you're doing. And that's where the next question that Jay asked about uh, what's the best breed do I suggest for a beginner? I never ever suggest one breed for a beginner. What I will tell anyone beginning pigs, if they say, hey Austin, what breed should I get? This is my response every time. You should get the breed of pig that someone near you who is willing to mentor you will sell you. So if you have someone near you who raises commercial pink pigs, and they're willing to take time with you and teach you how to raise those pigs right and educate you on the infrastructure and support you in the long run, buy those pigs. 
you'll be totally happy with your big pink pigs. It, it's way more about the mentorship you're gonna get from that person than it is about the breed you decide to go with. My first pig and then the pig I raised for years and years and years was the commercial style pigs. I always mention Tom Dexter. He was my mentor. He was incredible. He wouldn't sell me a pig till I came to his farm and took a tour. That was worth every dollar I ever paid the man for pigs. Go with the breed that your future mentor is selling. And not everyone on Craigslist selling pigs will be a good mentor. The way you learn that is with a phone call. Call them up. If they're like just quick answers and trying to get off the phone with from you, I'm not gonna be a good mentor. If they're answering your questions, yeah, I got this question, I got, they take time. Tom Dexter, the first time I called him, he spent an hour on the phone with me talking about pigs. I hadn't paid him a dime. To thank him over the years, I have sent him so many customers to thank him in return for his mentorship. So if you're in Connecticut and you want Tom's data, his info, I have his email. I can't share it on YouTube. He's asked that I not do that, but I can forward on. If you're interested, email me and we'll talk. This next question is from Robert. This actually isn't a question, I, I should say. Uh, I added the Ask Homesteady hashtag because I wanted to chat about what Robert, uh, Robert said. He said he had found that the feed that he gives his pigs affects the flavor. And Robert, I, I definitely would not argue with that. I personally feel that pig flavor comes from a combination of breed and life, <laughs> including what you feed it. There are breeds that are going to be fattier. I feel that fat affects the flavor and the texture of what you're eating. There, there are differences in each breed that I think will change flavor. I have seen it. I have eaten pink pigs and I've had, I raised pink pigs in Berkshires at the same exact time, same feed. So I do think part of that equation is breed. But absolutely, I feel what Robert says is true. I also think part of it is what you feed them. They will be so much yummier than the pig you buy at the supermarket because of what Robert said, what you feed them. He talked about uh, raising them on fruits and nuts and things. And a few people chimed in with comments about what you feed your pig affecting the quality. 100% agree. So what can you do for the best tasting pork? Find the breed you like the flavor of best, feed them good quality food the best you can. And remember, there's, as Kendra always likes to say, there's no accounting for taste. So while I think this to be absolutely true, in my universe it is, you may totally disagree with me and there's no hard truth on taste because you might like to, you know, drink cat milk and I like to drink camel milk and someone else likes to drink cow milk. So take everything we talk about with taste wise with a grain of salt, but I do feel what Robert said is true. What you feed an animal can affect how it tastes. Farm-raised pork is one of my favorite meats. Pork you buy off the shelf at the supermarket I think is flavorless. It is way too lean. It gets dried out and becomes like a hockey puck. Pork chops from the supermarket become like hockey pucks with zero flavor. Pork, the other white meat, no thank you. I want rich, dark, marbled heritage pork or commercial style pork raised holistically on a homestead, fed a great diet, allowed to move and get some of that nice marbling in, its, uh, in the steaks and that sort of thing. So there's my two cents on that. While we're talking about taste, um, super fan Alfredo, uh, he says, my wife hates goat and lamb because of the slightly gamey flavor, but she eats store bought pork and beef. Is it slightly gamey? So great question. Alfredo. Lamb, uh, here's another perfect example. We actually are gonna be making a video soon about lamb butchering because we just butchered some lambs. And I gotta tell you, the lamb that we raised this year, no gaminess. These chops, I, I would bet a million bucks your wife would love them. Uh, so, so good. So lamb breed and again, diet and all that stuff can play into that gamey flavor. But I've had lamb before that's very strong. And when you bite it, you're like, whoa, if you're new to lamb and I didn't grow up eating lamb, for me, it was like, whoa, what is that? So I, again, I totally understand. Store-bought pork is a much more mild, no flavor. And like I described, I find it gets to be like a hockey puck because they actually want their pork to be lean. Whoops. They want to breed lean pigs. I think that is lacking. I want big fat cap on my steaks. I want that to render down as I'm cooking and, and marbleize that fat on the edge and just mm, make it so good. I think what you should try, and this is the best way anybody can try before they actually go into having their own pigs, but buy a couple steaks from a local farm. And what I would suggest is try a chop, 
try a shoulder steak. That's something you won't see on the supermarket shelf, but one of the best steaks, the pig shoulder cut into steaks. Pork chop is a leaner cut. The pork shoulder steak is heavily marbled, lots of fat in it. Those two cuts will give you a really good idea of the flavor. A kuni kuni has a more distinct flavor. I could use the word gamey. I just find people use the word gamey as a negative far too often. I find it interesting. I like the flavor. I wish there was a better word. Maybe comment below if you got a good suggestion for a word to describe meat that has a flavor to it that isn't kind of bland supermarket pork but something that's more interesting it has more depth ah but this, those are like if i was on america's uh next food network star they'd be like those words don't tell me anything we watch a lot of food network <laughs> uh, i hope that helps alfredo try a couple steaks from a farm and see what you think tell me what you think let me know i think see uh how long does it take to raise a kuni kuni wiener pig to butcher weight versus a large Berkshire. I have only raised two crossbred regular pigs and love the flavor versus the flavor of store-bought pork, which is tasteless. So there you go, see, see knows what I'm talking about. Uh, see, uh, again, Cooney Cooney's slow, so slow. Now you can feed them quicker, but you get into a danger because a Cooney Cooney's a grazing pig, it's a lard pig, it can get too fat too fast. I've heard of people getting pigs so fat that their eyelids got fat and they became blind from like fat eyelids. How's that for a visual like big fat eyelids? <laughs> Sorry. So uh, you gotta watch and the Cooney Cooney's we have, I mean, we got them back in the spring the little ones and they're still so small. I've heard people talk about processing Cooney Coonies at two years, at three years. They are not a feeder or what you described as a wiener pig. So I would never suggest Cooney Coonies to buy like a feeder or we, we call them feeder pigs, but a wiener pig. They just take way too long uh, to make that worth it. And they are an expensive pig to get into. You'll find non, non registered, nothing special, kind of run of the mill Craigslist pigs are like $300. So not a great option. Berkshire way, definitely way to go. If you're getting feeders, wieners, and you want to see them go from spring, summer, fall and be done. Again, the only reason we got Coonies was we were looking for something different that my, my middle son could get into. He loves pigs. I do not want to let him go in a pen with a bunch of Berkshires. Even the Cooney boars, I won't let my younger ones go in with because even a Cooney boar is big. Now we have found our Coonies to be very, very friendly. So that is one of the benefits. They are small and they are very friendly. So that's basically what got us into Coonies. The great flavor and ease of processing has added some benefits to that. And we'll continue trying out different things. We also have an IPP boar. So we're gonna know a lot more about that breed in a year or two. Finally, my favorite comment that I got off this video, Kay says, my boys and I have been watching your videos as part of homeschool. And although I have zero intention of butchering my own meat, my six-year-old has been obsessed with your videos, especially anything butcher related. The egg eater that got turned into chicken pot pie video he really liked, but was disappointed to not see the actual chop. <laughs> It's been a lot to say the least, but I try to not make it weird, even though I'm usually fairly squeamish. We really appreciate your content. I love your being able to tactfully expose our young city kids to a country lifestyle and see them retain the info you share. So I wanted to give a special shout out to Kay's boys. And Kay, I'd like to send your boys a some Homesteady swag. Uh, so we're gonna send them a t-shirt, the uh, Homesteady. Uh, it's the t-shirt I'm wearing. You can't even see it right now. Hold on. We do the YouTuber snap. That one, the uh, Homesteady. This is the one I usually wear on my butcher days. Our Jurassic Homesteady, because you got the, the cool skeleton. I think your boys will like that one. So let me know. Email me, lost at thisishomesteady.com. Email me the boy sizes and give, uh, with the address where to ship it. Uh, we'll ship you out that. And uh, you boys will have some cool Homesteady swag. I love hearing about young city kids learning about, you know, being self-sufficient, raising your own food. That is one of the reasons I do this. I, was a, a, I wasn't a city kid, but I was a town kid. I grew up in town. Like I said at the beginning of the video, love my parents. They sound like you, Kim. A little bit squeamish with that sort of thing, but supportive. You sound like you're supportive of your boys. And uh, you know, even though maybe it makes you a little squeamish to think about it, that's why we do this. We share this stuff to help everybody uh, get a little bit more self-sufficient, a little bit more sustainable, a little bit more back to roots. And for all you know, your boys might grow up 
to fill your fridge with some of the best quality meat that you can ever have. And they'll do all the butchering and all the work. So love it. Special shout out to your boys and uh, your six year old in particular who likes to butcher videos. Email me off at this is Homesteady. And any of you who want to get some sweet Homesteady swag, we got beanies, we got t-shirts, we got really nice, this sweatshirt, this is my favorite. Oh, this is the fancy sweatshirt. I have some that are my farm sweatshirts. When I'm doing farm work, I wear those ones, and those are great. Uh, but this one, it's a little bit softer, a little bit cozier. Ooh. It's my going to town hoodie. <laughs> you millennials, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they are all available at our Homesteady Swag Shop. I will link to it right here. Our buddies, the Parsons at the Parson Homestead, they run the swag shop. They hand print all our Homesteady swag. They, The money you spend to get the Homesteady swag turns into chicken feed. Like there's not a better way to be, you know, holistic full circle with your your clothing purchases and buying a homesteady hoodie rocking telling the world that you are homesteady you're not afraid of pig heads and butcher videos and uh you know or you're the mom who maybe wants to support her boys who love the pig heads and the butcher videos whatever way you want to tell the world you're homesteady click on that link support the partisans homestead you support our homestead too we get a little bit from the sale and it's a win-win for everybody and these are so cozy Go get you some winter swag. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.